us begin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 133 of the Land Podcast. My name is Ian. I am Rob. I'm Dirt. Um, big news. Just kidding. I don't think there has been anything big enough to cause, you know, a scene in the MMA world. I mean, what? Moss Vidal versus Nate Diaz. Uh, brawl, but yes, yes. Ariel uh, posted today that uh, there's even more doubt about the UFC 303 main event than oh, there really? was last week. Yeah, oh. I just read it on my way back home. Uh, that he doesn't know if this is like a plan thing or if they're like in scramble mode or what, yeah. but um, it, I felt like last week it, it almost feels like people are like. I don't know. I don't know if people expected this because I feel like there's not a whole lot of like outcry for it. You know what I mean? I don't know if people are thinking that like, oh, that was just a one fluke press conference. Uh, the fight is still going to go through. But he just posted that there's even more doubt about the main event happening uh, now compared to last week right after the press conference got canceled. Damn, man. It did kind of, I mean... I did see a promotion for UFC 303 um, a couple days ago, so I was like, oh, shit, okay, maybe it's happening again. And then um, ESPN has been just playing rematches and rematches of Conor McGregor's fight, so I thought it was something that was going to happen. Maybe not. Thoughts? Anyways, <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> um Gilbert Burns, Sean Brady, September seventh. Oh yeah, their own main event. This this fight can go anywhere, and yeah. uh, uh, I'm more excited for that, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Low key, I think if Gilbert decides to strike with him, I think Gilbert can fucking. Mm. He can put him away, bro. Low I think key. So. I. Yeah. We'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, I mean, that's if he can. I don't know. It's crazy to think that, like, obviously Gilbert is such a high-level grappler, but I think Sean Brady is going to be looking still to take it to the ground, try to uh, grapple him. Um, and I think Sean Brady could still have success. Well, I mean, we always talk about how high-level a grappler, grappler Gilbert is, mm-hmm. but um, I think that's where Sean Brady is going to have his, his success, if he does have any. Mm-hmm. Um, This past Saturday, UFC... Fight night. Kennedy versus Imovov just happened. Um, let's talk about Raul Rosas Jr. Chi wee wee, chi wee wee. Uh, gets a submission in the second round against Ricky Tercios. Did you guys know that Ricky Tercios is half Filipino? Yes, sir. Then <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend told me that yesterday. And I was like, no wonder why his last name sounds like Tosino. <laughs> happy belated aapi month brother <laughs> um that's on rosas uh performance um i thought he looked good dude uh i mean I-, I think this is the right pace for him i think uh ricky was the right fight for him i think even now like do not go think i know it's a it's a it's a good win it's a good finish uh i know the initial especially like even uh the shape he came into this fight was crazy i feel like he really worked on um uh i don't want to say his physique but uh his body composition you know what i mean the physique Um, of an 18 year old king that's crazy you mother first of all bro (laughs) you know bro never mind uh uh, don't push him too too fast right now is i guess is what i'm trying to say i like the win i like the finish um, but I would like to see him fight um, uh, uh, probably a few more guys with uh, just a handful of fights in the UFC, just like he does. Um, build him up slowly uh, as long as we're not throwing him into the fire. Kid's still young. He's probably even going to grow more. So uh, I feel like we've seen it in between this fight and that last fight. I feel like he grew a little bit. Maybe he had to cut a little bit of extra weight. Who knows? But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the route the route he's going and the route that Bo Nickel's going is just it's the perfect 
perfect pace. You know, you don't want to push him too much like Patty. Uh, I thought I thought I thought Rosas looked good. Obviously, he's the younger fighter, the more active fighter. And this this is just how he wins his fights, man. He's just a young dude. He's so active, and man, there's a lot of doubt with him too for this fight. Um, I get it. Ricky Tercio, is, he's a tough guy. He's hard to put out, but Raul for Raul to put him out is just it just says a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and. A lot of people forget, man, he's coming from Syndicate, bro. There's so many killers there. I'm, I'm sure he gets I'm sure he gets some good ground game in, a lot of good striking in. So this this dude's just uh, it's all it's all downhill from here. I think uh he I mean he's asking for the spear, so just give him that. I think he deserves it. Mm -hmm. He uh Yeah, he's promoting himself just right, you know. Um I'm looking at the list of fighters he can fight. Uh, and then if he is going to fight at the Sphere, he kind of wants that name to be there. Um, but I'm not too sure if I want him to fight top 15. Um, I think he can. There are some fights that look good. Um, but a bunch of them are like vets on the way out, like Cody Garbrandt maybe. But I kind of don't want to see that. Um, no. Yeah. So he's not. Are... I don't even think he's ready for Garbrandt yet. Really? Yeah, I, I, I think Garbrandt beats him. I think so too. Dude, Garbrandt looked good against Figgy, man. Yeah, he did. It, he unfortunately, did. Figgy is one of the best in the world. Like, unfortunately, yeah. Garbrandt. I mean, it sucks. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, he has moments. Uh, a lot of people are going to call him washed, but he has moments in fights against good fighters where he looks good. You know, mm -hmm. they just sucks. He's fighting. Uh, would you want to pair up rising up and comer with rising up and comer like uh, Talbot, Payne Talbot, <sighs> or do you want to wait until a bit later on? Even that, I think I think Peyton is I think Peyton is in Cody Garbrandt range. Yeah, uh, mm. yeah. I I think even man, I don't know. Uh, I I. I would say, bro, give him another young guy with maybe two or three fights in the UFC. Mm. I, I just don't. I want to see him develop his striking before I before we push him that far up. You know, I see. round himself out a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I think Payne Talbot's on a different, whole different level right now. Like he's actually ready for a ranked fighter. As for Raul, you give him maybe one or two more unranked. Uh -huh. And then they meet each other when they're both like top ten. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I could see that happening with both of them. Who oh, is yeah. uh or never mind. I don't think he's ready for him either. The Ryzen guy that the UFC just signed. Oh yeah. Kai the Asakura. Japanese fellow. Yeah. yeah. No, maybe not. Maybe not that yeah. guy either. <laughs> <laughs> um the Coleman event, guys. Crazy. Dominic Reyes <laughs> gets a first round finish. Clipped him as Jacoby was coming in, uh, and then was just able to capitalize and all that. Good to see Don Grays get a finish. Good to see that it wasn't some sort of like, you know, he was losing two rounds, came back with the lucky shot. It was first round domination for Dominic Reyes. Thoughts on that fight? Let me say this, bro. Uh, first of all, I'm not, my main thing is not going to be congratulations to Dominic Reyes. Congratulations. Uh, amazing finish, amazing fight. Uh, and you, lo I love to see him kind of get his groove back because we know what what kind of fighter he is. We know who Dominic Reyes is, and it sucks that um, I don't know. He just seemed completely out of his element. It's like we've seen him uh, put on that great striking performance against John Jones, and ever since then he's been going against these guys that uh, I don't know look like are, are just can punch through planets. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um. But I will say, bro, just to – I know this doesn't have to do, really do with the Don McGrath fight. But John Jones is slowly just shooting himself in the foot, bro. <laughs> with Did you see the tweets about – Dominic Reyes gives like a, like a real uh, uh -oh. answer to like, hey, like, you know, I haven't been the same since the – or I've been – haven't been the same since the Jones fight. I've been kind of – um, thinking I had to do more, push myself more, you know what I mean, blah, blah, blah. He really wasn't – it really wasn't a shot at John Jones at all. And basically, John Jones gets on Twitter and is just being John Jones, bro. Um, it's so corny, especially when people are waiting for you to fight. If you haven't fought in a year, you should probably shut the fuck up. That's so um, 
It's so corny. John Jones is slowly becoming the the Facebook boomer of the UFC, <laughs> and uh, I I just don't like him. I just don't like to see him do anything. Open his mouth. I I don't want to see him do anything anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but congratulations, to Dominic Reyes. Uh, next for him, man. Let's see. Um. Oh, that might be Anthony Smith, bro. What's Anthony Smith doing? <laughs> What's Anthony Smith got what going a fun on? Fight that one is <laughs> best bout machine. Anthony Smith fight performance of the night machine. Anthony Smith. Yeah, let's let's. I, I'd be down to see that, brother. <laughs> I thought um, it, it was just honestly, bro. Watching Dominic fight these days is so scary because, um, yeah, he's he was on a losing streak, and it's like, dude, it's just gonna happen again. He's gonna go that route. It's good to see him win. It's good to see him happy. It's good to see him. He he is just so grateful, so thankful for his team and this journey and everything. I mean, dude, that that counter hook was just everything, bro. Like that prior to the John Jones fight, you know, some people think he won, some people think he lost. Like he looked so good in that fight. And before that, you know, it just it just looked like the old Dominic Reyes. I think I'd like to see him and Either him and Anthony Smith or him and uh, Alonzo Menafield go at it. Mm-hmm. That's a good Still, one. give him a ranked fighter. Um, yeah, he looked great in there. Um, yeah, I was I'm not going to lie. I'm a little disappointed in Dustin Jacoby. I thought just because Jacoby is all about precision and all that, and I thought it was weird that he was just kind of charging in, um, throwing shots like that. Um Hats off to Dominic Reyes. I'm happy he gets a victory. He's had some gnarly, gnarly defeats the past few years. Um, for Dominic Reyes, I don't know, man. I, although he got the the win, it's like him and Anthony Smith are just in that same boat of like, is this guy? Are these guys going to be able to do another title run? Are they a little bit too over the hill? Um, I think Anthony Smith would be fun. Um, if not, throw them another uh, up and comer. See if they pass the test. Can I help you, King? You said uh, you compared Anthony Smith to Dominic Reyes. Yeah. Of being over the hill. Yeah. Anthony Smith is a journeyman. Anthony Smith has been has miles on him. You don't think Dominic Anthony... Reyes getting knocked out three fights in a row? I now think having him? a, I think having a punch ticket is different than, I guess, so. uh, having miles on him. I think he can still compete. Um, mm. I just think he needs to make the right changes. Mm-hmm. So hold on that. Um, yeah. Once again, light heavyweight division is a little, a little weird. Um, and then the main event of the evening. Jared Cannonier loses via standing TKO in the fourth round to Nasruddini Mavov. Uh, how do you guys feel about this fight? The where it was stopped, I have an issue with everything. Lead like if you isolate the stoppage, uh, I kind of have a problem with. But everything leading up to the stoppage was, I mean, you could kind of justify. It. I think that if this is a title fight, it doesn't get stopped right there. Um, do I think it was like the dominating performance, uh, that everybody was saying that like, like Jared had like this dominating performance before the stoppage. Like he, uh, I don't know the fight. I don't know. I thought it was more competitive than what people were making it out to be. I felt like maybe I was watching a different fight. I feel like everybody I talked to was like, uh, I also, you know, this was later in the night. I might have had a couple beers in me by the time this fight came on. But I thought this fight was closer than what people were making it out to be. You know what I mean? And I wanted Jared to win. Um, but surprisingly, it almost looked like – I forget what round it was. Maybe it was the third round where it kind of looked like uh, Jared was, like, fading a little bit. Imovov kind of turned it on a little bit more. Um, I was That was surprising to me. It looked like Imovov kind of had control going into the later round. So – um, who knows, man? Who knows what could happen? It's a five round fight. Um My thing is, do I want to see them running back? No. 
Um, I think Imovov is going to get tested in different ways if he moves up. This is a this is a weird fight because it's not. I mean, it's a KO. It's not the dominating per- performance Imovov wants. Mm-hmm. And if he's going to like dip his toe into like these top five guys at middleweight and expect it to be like this Cannoneer fight, uh, it's it's not going to go good for him. You know. Um. Yeah. Next for him. I don't know, man. I don't want to see him fight Strickland again. Would it grab a fight? There's one man. I see Who? one man. Brennan Allen, maybe? Yeah. No? Yep. I like that fight. Yeah. I do like that fight. Brennan Allen versus Emovov. Run that. I like it. Yeah. Um going into the fourth, I had it I had a three zero Jared Cannonier. Um I think Jared was just doing a little bit more than Nasruddin within the first, what, two and a half rounds. And it was the third round when you started to notice that middle of the third round, like you could see Jared fade a little bit. Nasruddin picked oh, up weird. the pace. He, he, yeah, he put more pressure on uh, Cannonier than the fourth round, man. It's just, uh, the stoppage was just really weird. I think yeah. I think everyone can agree that really, um, it doesn't, doesn't take away the fact Jared was hurt. There's there's no there's no taking that away, but it, it's just it, it was a bad stoppage and it sucks because Jason Herzog's like I think he's the best ref right now. The best, right? he's right the now, best. He's the best ref. Like yeah. he stopped fight. He's willing to stop a fight and like warn, give you a warning on the spot, time running. Like he he is the best ref in the UFC like right now, and I think this is just his first mistake. Mm-hmm. That's you crazy, know? isn't it? It's yeah, it's nuts, and I don't. It's not going to be the it's. It's not gonna stop either. We're gonna see more, and it's just—it's just the nature of being a fucking ref, man. I say it all the time. It's a stressful fucking job. I can't picture myself being a ref. Um, you know, we've seen in the past Herb Dean, Mario Yamasaki, obviously, like Steve Mazzagatti. They all have their their shit calls. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess. I guess. I guess we fucking move on. I don't. I don't want to see a rematch. We just move on, and I can see them. Yes, giving an Allen someone. Another test, and I think Brennan Allen's perfect. Someone mm-hmm. who can, someone who can go all, all five rounds, can strike, and he's a great grappler too. So I'm um, looking forward to that. I, I'd like to see that. I can make Costa Cannoneer. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. That's nice. Um, yeah. Stoppage wise, wasn't the best. I was very surprised. It kind of was just like Cannoneer and Imovov sort of ran into not ran into but bumped into herzog and herzog was like all right you know what i'll just break you right now since since i'm pretty much touching them but um i would have liked to see kenanir fall down i know that sounds crazy to to ask for for more damage to a person but this is kenanir's first time getting a finish or getting finished in the middleweight division so we would have hoped to see something a little bit more of a an exclamation point on that fight. Um, yes, Nestor Dean hit him clean with like three, four shots right to the face. Um, but Jared Cannonier still had his feet under him. It's not like he was entirely wobbly. You know, he was more so just creating distance, running away to 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 create distance. Um, so I wish we could have seen that fight. Um, maybe about a minute more, see what would happen. But yeah. I mean, right before it stopped, like Jared threw a right hook and it landed too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, um, but yeah, like you said, Rob, when you're a referee, when I mean, it's easy for us as spectators to to watch a fight. You know, the whole cage. We're seeing the whole cage, and then we're able to see both fighters pretty much um, how they're reacting. But when you're in the cage with two big dudes and you're your number one thing is to protect both fighters that's you know sometimes you make a great call sometimes you make a bad call because one second you see that maybe the fighter's eyes go behind their head um and then you stop it but then they're right back in it so it's just a hard that's a tough tough call sometimes to be a referee yeah not just that but like imagine another another thing that people don't even think about that like the hardest thing i think for referees is like we're watching the fight from a fan perspective. They're not watching the same That's fight true. we are. They're mm-hmm. not watching it from 
oh, that, you know, that's a good strike. That's a good takedown. Like everything is, is focused on uh, the, the rules of the sport. You know what I mean? They're checking, they're looking at it from a whole different perspective. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's easy for guys that are, you know, they've watched their ninth fight, fight of the night and fucking to make a, cou- a call from the couch. Um, but yeah, it has to be the hardest <laughs> job in MMA, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Just get up, dude. Just get up. <laughs> get up, bro. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all in agreement. Uh, I mean, the top four, top five, uh, middleweights right now all have fights lined up, except for Sean Strickland. But, um, Sean and Imovov already fought previously, so I don't think I don't that's something that. that we're looking forward to, anyways. Um. So yeah, I think Brendan Allen would be great. Marvin Vittori, why not? I'm not. I'm not mad at that. Um, Marvin Vittori is another dude that has an unlimited gas tank, so it'll be fun to see Mavov test himself with that. Um, but yeah, Cannoneer, he'll just get back on his horse and he'll he'll do his thing as he always does. Um, this Saturday, oh my, you guys don't know how happy I am for for this fight. <laughs> uh. Alex Perez versus Tatsuro Tyra in the UFC Apex Gym. Um, our lightning round picks will go all the way up until the main event of the evening. Starting off, a bunch of featherweights. Um, Mel Kazile Costa versus Shailon Nuradonki. <laughs> Sorry. Dude, there's no way. I feel like a lot of times you have like different cards. You know? I'm going straight off the UFC website. What's the first fight you just said? Uh, Costa versus Shaylon. Costa versus Shaylon. Holy shit, I don't see it. Hang on, give me one sec. <laughs> Rob, you go ahead and pick that Costa one. Costa by <laughs> decision. I'll go... Um, I'll go Shay Elon by decision. Uh, Costa decision. <laughs> uh, next up, Josephine Nutson versus Julia Polis- Polastri. Uh, Josephine by decision. Nutson submission. Uh, I'll go Nutson um, by TKO. In the featherweight division, we have Jekka Saragi versus Weston Wilson. Jekka, KO. Saragi, TKO. Uh, Jekka by knockout. In the women's flyweight division, we have Carly Judas versus Gabriela Fernandez. Judas, TKO. Judas, decision. Uh, Judas, decision. In the welterweight division, we have... Josh Quinlan versus Adam Fugit. Um, Quinlan decision. Quinlan TKO, and that's mm. that's that's all heart. <laughs> With my heart. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I was very uh, sad with Quinlan's last performance because he was just throwing those those rights. That's all he had. Um, Adam Fugit's a great striker, but. I'm gonna ride with my boy Josh Quinlan by knockout. In the flyweight division, we have Jimmy Flick versus Nate Menace. Uh, Nate decision. Nate submission. I'm going Nate decision. Another flyweight bout. Number twelve ranked Tagir Ulombekov is defending his rank against Joshua Van. Tagir, what the hell is he looking at? <laughs> Ulombekov by submission. Joshua Van decision. I am gonna go with Joshua Van by TKO. Um, all right, to kick off the main card, two bantamweights: Brady uh, High Stand versus Garrett Armfield. Uh, Garrett Armfield TKO. Armfield TKO. Go high stand by uh, um, submission. Another flyweight bout. This one's going to be great. Asu Almabaya versus Jose Johnson. 
Also, Omobayev is the stud that just fought. Uh, who did he fought last time he was out? He fought Mr. Um, CJ Vergara. By uh, maybe I'm thinking of. I'm thinking somebody is. Uh, if Asu wins this fight, I'm gonna start eating horse meat. All these Kazakhstan motherfuckers are studs. <laughs> Asu wins this fight. I'm eating horse meat. Asu by K or submission. Uh, Alma by TKO. Alma by by submission. Um, next up in the bantamweight division, we have Douglas Silva de Andrade versus Miles John. Miles John decision. Miles John decision. Um, Miles. No, nah, I'll go Andrade by decision. In the featherweight division, we have Timmy Kwamba versus Lucas Almeida. Uh, Timmy by Timmy. TKO. Timmy Kwamba by submission. I am gonna go Timmy Kwamba by decision. Um. Our common event, uh, two middleweights, Ikram Alaskara versus Antonio Tricoli. Ikram. Decision. Ikram submission. Uh, I'm going to go Ikram by TKO. Round one. Um, all right. Our main event of the evening. Number five ranked Alex Perez is taking on number thirteen ranked Tatsuro Tyra. How do you guys see this fight going? My biggest concern is that Tatsuro doesn't um, land something big on Perez early, swarm him, and not. Nah. Not uh, gas. I'm not saying gas out, but uh, I don't want to see him expend a bunch of energy. We've seen Alex Perez uh, get hurt early in fights and weather the storm. Uh, kind of difficult to finish. Um, and Tatsuro Tyra is a dude who I feel like takes really good advantage of opportunities like that and ends up putting guys away. I think it's going to be harder to do with Alex Perez. Um, still, I'm going to go Tyra. Decision. <laughs> it's good to see him get his main event. It is. Um, yes. Well deserved. And Alex Prez, I think, is the perfect test. A number ranked number five fighter against the thirteen. Um, this 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 dude has all the right tools as an up and comer. He. The thing is, it, it, yeah, kind of going off what King said, you got to catch Perez early, and you, you have to finish him in the early rounds because he's been through wars before. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he looked great against Nicolau, but we got to look at who Nicolau is. He's Prior to that fight, he got knocked out by Brandon Roy Val. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think he gets it done. I think we see another one from this dude up in Rising Fight. Um, I'll say... A third round TKO over Alex Perez. Very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, my biggest worry is that uh, Tatsuro, I mean, there's a lot of times where he has to bounce around different opponents. Um, he was scheduled to fight David Dvorak, and then it went to Tim Elliott, and then that got scrapped to Joshua Van, and then that got scrapped to where we're at now. Um, so... Uh, it's been a it's been a long road, a long journey to the octagon for Tatsuro. Um, and this is, I'm happy with this fight. This is his biggest fight ever in his whole entire career. It's against Alex Perez that has tons, tons, tons of experience fighting top level dudes. So um, Alex Perez is going to bring the just the experience, the octagon experience. And I think if Tatsuro striking doesn't match up too well against Alex Perez which was which is my biggest concern then it might be a long night but we've seen Tatsuro be really really patient with um takedowns and um advancing positions uh so I think if Tatsuro can get him down control him which he usually does against his opponents 
he can find a submission or he's just going to be able to control him on the ground. Um, but we'll see. Alex Perez, I completely um, did not give him credit. Uh, making my prediction in his fight with Nicolau, I thought he was on his way out. Obviously, he's not. He's always game. So I'm excited for this. I have Tatsuro by submission in the later rounds. We'll see. Um, I believe that's it, though. Uh, yes. Shout out, bro. He did it. Uh, if you don't know, uh, for like the last few months, um, Craig Jones has been campaigning, creating his <laughs> own grappling tournament to uh, combat ADCC, to uh, help increase fighter pay. If you didn't know, ADCC is the pretty much the Olympics of grappling, of jiu-jitsu. Um, the winners uh, apparently were only getting paid ten thousand uh, dollars, which is insane. Um, Craig Jones starts on a grappling tournament, offer only two divisions for the men above and below eighty kilos. Um, winner gets a million dollars. This is from a person who has significantly less money than uh, the the person that's running uh, ADCC. Um, they. Just announced that this year, ADCC, they'll be offering show money to all competitors, $2,500 uh, per competitor. And then uh, they're thinking about adjusting the winner's prize money as well. So love to see fighter pay go up, dude, no matter where it's at. Someone's got to fucking do it, right? And Craig Jones yeah. is like, he's put his foot down too. He's like, dude, I'm he just did. trying to help everyone out. Facts. And to do it the weekend of too is fucking, it's even more badass. He's like, dude, I'll take Thomas and Mac. And you know yeah. what? You want to grapple with me? I'll give you ten grand just for just to show up. Back. You have the fucking Crazy. see. Big, honestly. Craig Jones brings out more fans than Gordon Ryan. Obviously, Gordon Ryan's the better grappler, but he's just uh, he's a fucking. Craig man. Jones is the most entertaining man in jiu jitsu. He's yeah, the most exactly. entertaining man in jiu jitsu. Yeah. Especially Gordon hasn't competed in years. Uh, I mean, not years, but uh, he has had some health issues recently. So even though he is the best grappler of our generation exactly. maybe ever um mm -hmm. it's hard to uh give a guy attention when he when he's not competing you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah, yeah. it's just so crazy I, I talk to my wife about this all the time it's like dude this is the highest level of jiu-jitsu that we we're seeing right now they're getting paid peanuts dude it's nuts yeah someone's and, got yeah, and, and so so much young talent bro like sometimes yeah. like i feel so Nothing makes me old, feel older than watching like a Rutolo Brothers match or watching like a, a, a Micah Galvao match, bro. I feel so old. Right. It's crazy. These kids are 21, 22 years old and literally creating moves in Jiu Jitsu. It's insane. It's so fun to see, though. Yeah. It is sick. It's sick. Yeah. Is Craig Jones, is that um, him versus Gabby Garcia? Is that the same day or different? I hope so. That'd be a <laughs> sick uh, main event, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm excited for that one. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Craig Jones isn't the better grappler, but you feel like you can be his friend. Like with Gordon Ryan, he's so intimidating looking. He's so brash, um, comes across as an asshole, which is fine. You know, that's what you get to do when you're the best in the world. But mm -hmm. Craig Jones yeah. is much more personable grounded well i think that's where the divide was and why the the dun hair death squad split up in the first place is i think craig and the guys that left with craig saw an opportunity to make more money and be more successful mm. um putting themselves out there and you know letting the world see their personalities investing more into social media um because of how low fighter pay is in jiu-jitsu you know what i mean a lot of these guys are living out of their vans training at their at their gyms, you know, jumping gym from gym across the country. And uh, just the pay just isn't there for some of the best, best athletes in the world. So mm -hmm. it's good to see those guys um, get their recognition. Yeah. It was crazy to hear. You guys probably already listened to the podcast, right, with John, Joe Rogan. It was crazy to hear how the winner of ADCC can't sell uh, a video, uh, instructional, more than mm -hmm. someone like Craig Jones, which – I mean, Craig Jones has said he has a personality for it, but it's just crazy that uh, a top grappler in the world can't sell a video. 
Yeah, I own more Craig Jones instructionals than I do Gordon Ryan instructionals. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, good shout out. I like that. Um, all right, what are your guys' song suggestions? House Fire, Tyler Childers. Um, take me out, Franz Ferdinand. Oh, very nice. I'm going to go. Now I'm up to my neck with offers. Suicide boys. All right, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you guys next week when we talk about our reactions to Tyra versus Perez, as well as give our predictions for Hamzat versus Whitaker, UFC, Saudi Arabia. We'll see y'all next week. Peace out. Peace out. Later.